Hey folks, AshleyLThingsInterview.com. So this is first in a few videos regarding endodontic access and tooth morphology. I'm not going to talk about morphology of canals and stuff like that, but more useful stuff. I mean, if you can't get into the tooth properly, there's no point in worrying about the canals. So I received an email from a young man last night asking if I had any tips, and sure enough, this is a video I've been wanting to cut, and that just reminded me that I needed to do it. So we're going to discuss now is I'm going to go over the general conclusions from an, an article that was printed in 2004 published in Journal of Anodontics by Deutsche Musikant. Morphological measurements of anatomic landmarks in human maxillary mandibular and molar pulp chambers. This is a great simple paper to read and it's got a lot of value. So the link is up and what they did was they took 200 teeth, 100 of maxillary and 100 mandibular molars and just did some measurements. So let's take a, take a look here through the stereo, stereo microscope. And what I've done is we, I was down in the oral surgery clinic and found some teeth. And this one had been, oh look, it's dented there. Found some extracted teeth. And this one was fractured. So this worked out perfect for today. So in one of the conclusions, they found that the CJ was at the same level as the roof of the pulp chamber. In 90... 97 to 98% of the time in both maxillary and mandibular molars, the CJ uh, was at the same level. So here's a CJ, you can see what I've done, I've taken black marker, and where that line, the darkening line is, is where the CJ is, and sure enough, if you run it across, it's the pulp chamber. Now this is generalities, remember, uh, teeth do change uh, through time with age. Okay, so that's one. So if you're you know already if you probe, you take your probe even before you start your access because normally we don't access on teeth like virgin teeth uh, to do endodontics. However, if you do find the CEJ or if you can find, normally we're going, it's hard to generalize, um, but if you can determine that where the CEJ is, you're going to, you can measure, so that's the next, of course I pull up the bent probe, I'm trying to hide that one. You can measure from the CEJ to the cusp tip, to one of the cusp tips, and what they found that, in their general conclusions, that the cusp tip, let me read it exactly the way, it, the distance from the cusp tip to the pulp chamber ceiling height is approximately six millimeters. So let's take a measurement here. Of course, this, that's generalities. What they did find is that the cusp tip in maxillary molars to the roof, approximately 6.36, 6.24 6 millimeters in maximum mandibular molars for the standard deviation of one. So what you can do, so you can see here I've got a measure. So from the cusp tip, let's carry that over. It's approximately mm, seven. So what you can do is take Dr. Hargraves gave us a great hint where you can use um, access with a, a number two round burr. And what you can do here is you can just measure off. What I did was I took a marker. I know it sounds like a fool. It sounds so simple, but with experience, what I did was I marked off approximately, now it's seven, it was six mill, marked off six millimeters on my number two round. And what he suggests and then what you do is that when you go in the axis, you know that approximately at this point you should be around the, the um, chamber roof. What he suggests also is using a number two round because if, if you have any problems with anesthe obtaining anesthesia, uh, if you do intrapulpal anesthesia, you'll be able to take your 27 gauge and it relies on it. There's some lit to say that, that discusses intrapulpal anesthesia is based on pressure. So if you use a small burr, get in and the patient does have some sensation. You don't have a wide open axis, which I normally do. You have just a little small port and you can apply as much pressure to obtain that intrapulpal anesthesia. Now that was a really neat hint, so thank you Dr. Hargraves. So like I said, <coughs> you can number off your burrs and the next article that I'm going to discuss at 
uh, probably tomorrow, the day after, it was by Krasner and Rankow, and that's sort of a few laws that they uh, determined uh, where the pulp chamber is situated within the, uh, the tooth itself. So just to review, Deutsche Musikant, they suggest that the from the cusp tip to the roof of the pulp chamber is approximately six millimeters. In 97 to 98 percent of the time, the CEJ approximates the roof of the pulp chamber. And if you go right down the middle of the tooth, you're going to most likely, because secondary to the rule of centrality, and we'll learn about that next time, um, you'll be able to accurately determine where your pulp chamber is. I hope that helps. Let me know what you think. Cheers.